Welcome everyone here to Excellency Light League. I am Necrox, joined by Dunsey, and we're about to get into a best of five series in the quarterfinals in between Redacted and CB Clockwork. This one should be pretty exciting, if to say the least. I am certainly stoked to see it. Um, Redacted, we've seen a couple times, but they were one of our first streamed matches, so it's been a little bit. I remember way back, I think it was week two, I was calling Diamond Fan, so he's back in it. They are the top seed tonight, so we are waiting still to see um, which side Redacted would like to start on. Reminder for the playoffs, the higher seed gets to choose which map they would like to start on. So which side and then the loser of each game after that is going to select the side that they want so we're still waiting on redacted and cinema to make their choices we'll see what they pick it's going to be interesting though heading into draft yeah honestly i i think the side selection could make a pretty big difference for both these teams redacted i'm not sure is a team that has an incredible first pick uh, between the five of them i don't think there's anything that really can be flexed uh, beyond maybe two roles so wouldn't expect too much. Maybe Karma would be a nice selection for them. But Red Side, if you can get that classic counter pick, if you can get Gold Fan on something that can win his lane and impact the map, it can change from Gold Fan to Diamond Fan pretty quickly. On the other side of the coin, Anderson Cooper is the one I'm looking at. He questioned me uh, with his Orange Jungle last week, proved that it is worthy. And picks like that can be really, really surprising if you do grab that Red Side and just maintain the flex all the way until the end of the draft. Yeah, I, I, you know, there's not a ton of just pure power picks that we've seen in Light League that kind of necess necessitate a B1. Um, like you said, that Karma is really, really strong, but um, it's not like the LCS where you see these certain champs that are just overly powerful. The yeah. Gwen, you know, that's just, it has to be pick or banned. You're going to see it no matter what. So um, I'm excited to see. I'm expecting kind of the red side favor for a lot of these teams who like to have the counter pick. You know, they, they like to have those solo lanes. They, they want to see what the other team is going to show. Want to have a little bit of comfortability in reacting to those lanes. All right. Well, I do believe we have confirmation. It is redacted taking red side for game one. They will get themselves at R5, just like we were saying. Nothing too crazy to pick on the B1. So might as well go ahead and get yourself as many counter picks as possible. The question is, where do the priority my mind blower has been an incredible top laner uh, honestly against lotus white he was the main issue maybe even gotten mm -hmm. a back door in here and there uh, on the alawi i'm not sure if you want to give it to bot lane dark dragon and solar biscuit still have some kinks to work through in the bot lane definitely think uh though they are coming online the later we get but of course mid lane counter pick has always been the classic the stock standard so as we get into draft i think the only question is where do they put their priority and who gets this agency in draft that is certainly the question for Redacted. On the other hand, for CB Clockwork, there's a ton of question marks. I just want to highlight that there's a ton of um, lane swaps and even a new player entering the playoffs here for Clockwork. Forgotten Turtle, the 80 carry from Clockwork, is not playing tonight. They're going to have Triple Cute moving from the top lane, who was a mid-season addition as well, into the 80 carry role, joining second team all pro Dory K there. And they're going to move YRU into the mid lane. Um, that's the new player to look out for today. No idea what their pool is like. Haven't been part of this. So this is their first showing, I believe. And then Booty Bang and Billy is going to go from his mid lane. He's played extremely well there. Showed off a lot of solo kills, a lot of talent on his own. He's going to be moving to the top lane against your all pro first team top laner. You mentioned him earlier. The man himself, Mind Blower in the top lane. Going to be a tough matchup for Booty Bang and Billy. Yeah, I think that honestly could determine this game, that top lane matchup. Of course, the debut for running in the mid lane against Goldfan. These two uh, will be looking at duking out. Solo lanes, obviously a big point of contest. And the only other thing that can impact these solo lanes is the jungle. You look at uh, the way to get this game rolling for either of these two teams, and it comes from these aggressive junglers. Olympian, I think, has fallen a little bit short of my personal expectations and maybe the analyst all throughout. But... Man, this guy's highs are just so insane. If he is playing the game he wants to play, if he's getting the resources required, he will invade, he will find 1v1s, he'll find 1v2 outplays, and he'll play these skill expressive champions and just skill check you. And if he can do that tonight, honestly, he could take the series by himself, not only set his team up for success, but knocking it down himself. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see those particular solo lanes. Like you said, though, Olympian as well in the jungle. I know you know a lot about this team, uh, Necrox here. Four of these guys, no, three of, three of these guys at this point on your ex light league team, Merciless. Yeah. Tell me about the lane swap with Dark Dragon moving to AD carry and Gold Fan moving from top to mid. I mean, it's clearly worked out. They didn't, you guys missed the playoffs last split, but these guys, the number three seed coming in, Redacted, look to be the favorites against the CB Clockwork team that was also very strong during the season. Yeah, Redacted, honestly, the only one that stayed the same uh, is the jungle in Olympian, and even he was thinking about a role swap. So Goldfan moving from top to mid, not really surprising. He really likes these agencies as we head straight into draft. Uh, champions that can provide a lot to the team. Dark Dragon as well had been practicing AD carry for a big team, a uh, big while. The biggest issue for him, in my opinion, was champion pool. He didn't actually have a very expansive pool of AD carries. Uh, not a traditional marksman player, stand back, kite, and get peel. Uh, he likes the Samiras, he likes the Varuses, these offspring sort of AD carries. With that being said, though, Clockwork certainly have ways to deal with it, and they're going to ban away the Hecarim away from Olympia and the Vladimir away from the likes of Goldfin and the Viego out of maybe a couple players' hands. Orn out of the hands of Anderson Cooper in the jungle, maybe LeBlanc and Nocturne, of course, so incredibly strong. Yeah, a lot of these particularly, um, not pocket, but definitely comfort picks being taken away. I mean, it's, it's weird, right? Because Redacted doesn't know what Booty Bang and Billy wants to play in the top lane. They don't know what Running wants to play in the mid lane. So this is a lot of OPGG scouting. They're going to be going off of what they think um, they could potentially be bringing out. And there's the B1. You see it. Ezreal, despite the Divine uh, Sunderer nerfs here from 12% to 9%, still very, very strong, extremely safe. And it's going to be countered with a Karma R1. Yeah, Karma. Again, the one champion that we could have imagined would have been priority for this squad. They just go ahead and grab it. No issue there. The Ezreal has a pretty hard time chewing through all of that shielding that can come from the Karma. Cho'Gath as well going to be picked up. This one's interesting. Technically could be Flex Mid Gold Fan. Probably one of the widest champion pools in Light League, or at least he's willing to play the most champions. Uh, but I would imagine this one is going top lane. And this begins to answer the question about where we're getting priority. Probably headed towards mid for a gold fan, my mind blower. You can put him on a tank, he will still perform. And that's what Redacted are going with now. Yeah, and I love the tankiness for Mind Blower. Like you said, I mean, he's just such a great frontliner, and he typically does well in the lane, even on the tanks, even in poor matchups. I've seen him take this Cho'Gath into sets, and there it is, Booty Bang and Bailey on a counter matchup, but not so fast, because I have seen with my own eyes Mind Blower take this matchup to the set lane, win it, teleport bottom, and make map movements, make an impact around bot lane, around mid lane, uh, securing Drakes, Mind Blower, has the capability to do it. We'll see what Booty Bang ability can do though, because this is technically a set favored matchup. Set favored matchup without Stride Breaker becomes a little bit difficult to gap close. Meanwhile, no longer 300 unit dash. Mathematically correct set though is more strong now than ever, just because of the nerfs to the other iteration of the build. Morgana as well picked up, which is an interesting decision, especially considering you are into a Karma. But regardless, it's a comfort pick on the bot side. So wouldn't expect anything else. Jin, again, not a traditional AD carry for Dark Dragon. He likes to be very, very far away from the team fights, if at all possible. Jin provides that safety, and no surprise to see him pick that one up. Jin Zhao getting through first phase means that it is automatically taken off the board. Akali as well. And as we get later into this draft, I'm becoming more and more curious about where Gold Fan is headed. As an AP-ish top side, not a lot of damage to be fair, but they're putting this mid jungle on a pedestal, Dunsey, for Redacted to be able to take over the map. Yeah, but we've seen uh, Goldfan also play the Karma. He's played it in the top lane. I'm wondering if they're gonna play a supportive style with it in the mid lane here and buff up that Jin and potentially a carry jungler for Olympian. I think they will pick jungle just to save that support yeah. mid flex on the Karma. There it is, Ooh, Elisa, on. which can also be flexed. I mean, that could be Goldfan. I have no idea if that's in his repertoire, but it's still saving another flex. Olympian on it most likely though, on a carry jungler. He's gonna get the mobility. He's gonna get early gank priority. He's gonna get damage. There it is. I mean, we've seen Olympian's pool be completely pinched before, and he's pulled out 
like second time kindred and completely obliterated on it so he has the uh you know the the potential to just bring out these random picks it's really hard to ban on his champion ocean he might look like a fool at times but he has the tendencies to carry i like it i think we're gonna assume that's where it's gonna go now but we can still be careful about where they're gonna place it on the side of redacted Okay, things just got pretty interesting for CB Clockwork, however. They pick up the Nautilus, which means Morgana may not actually be headed into the bot side. Could always be something like a jungle Morgana, which is looking more likely, considering yep. there's a Ziggs pick up in the mid lane. Champion's incredibly strong. I'll have you know, Dunsey, Lee Sin is Gold Fan's highest win rate champion in solo queue. So, <laughs> I'm not sure if we're going to see a challenger fan whip out the insects, but if so, damn, would that be pretty fun to witness. Into Ziggs, though, that matchup seems pretty rough. You definitely want something uh, to be able to match that range. Victor would be a decent option in to it does provide a lot of scaling as well and they will go ahead and lock that one in redacted now pretty much dedicated to their roles but clockwork however someone's got to go jungle and i'm not sure which one is better nautilus or morgana i'm assuming it's going to be morgana but i i don't know i'm not in love with it uh I mean, Necrox, I've seen set jungle last week in Light League during week nine. So, I mean, nothing is is taken out. I mean, we do think it's going to be into the show gap here, but I'm going to say, oh man, they did buff the Nautilus jungle clear like a few patches ago, but I'm going to assume that Clockwork is going to put Anderson Cooper on the Morgana. I've seen him play yeah. it before. He likes the rumble a lot as well. He does provide an AP presence for his team. Not necessarily needed here because they have running on the Ziggs. Um, so we'll see once we get into the actual client draft 20 seconds they lock into those roles the victor pick however that you had brought up this is the exact champion that gold fan was playing when diamond fan was born on stream for the first time <laughs> in the mid lane he those absolutely yeah those happy feet smurfed it with a zanyas as well um i i don't necessarily think victor is great in the meta right now but gold fan can show up on it so i'm excited to see him there yeah, honestly, giving R5 to Goldfan is exactly what the doctor ordered. You give your mid lane some agency. Again, may not have too much to say about the Ziggs matchup in mid lane. We're going to get into client select now to make sure we know where things are headed. And as we get a broader look at these team comps, CB Clockwork have a lot of range to deal with. You have the Morgana Binds from long distance. You have the Ezreal Ziggs. Plus, I would even put Nautilus in there as a sort of long range engage style champion. The hook can reach pretty damn far if you're not prepared. Redacted considerably shorter range, but that Karma is going to provide a lot of value, especially if we see a Shirelius come out. Everyone can then begin to gap close and make problems for CB Clockwork. Yeah, they do have Jin Root for a little bit of longer uh, potential poke in range uh, as far as a little bit of CC as well. Um, but you're right. I'm, I'm curious if anyone's going to take cleanse into the Morgana as well. I mean, that she won't be leveling up uh, her bind first. She's going to have to level pull at least up to three, if not five, because she's clearing the jungle. We're assuming that this is the pick yeah. for Anderson Cooper. Um, so the binds won't come in until level 13 where they're going to be terrorizingly long for like days you'll be locked there in, in your morgana bind but we'll see if there's any cleanses picked up i do think it might be decent for uh, dark dragon on the gin uh, but it's tough into a nautilus and ezreal lane you want yeah. a little bit of heal a little bit of safety there because uh, the the cleanse isn't going to help you against the depth charge yeah it doesn't really help much against nautilus there's a slow and there's what a half second route there as well so yeah not too much to offer uh, into that lane in particular but regardless we'll see if anyone grabs the cleanse i'm not sure that anderson cooper wants to path bot side all too much the ezreal doesn't provide all that much damage karma Jin, if you're not careful you know you get the q poke uh, with the mantra q very easily landing the slow that leads into root that leads into a gin trap and things can get pretty spicy really quick down there in the bot side and i'm glad you mentioned anderson cooper clearing in the jungle because we often see hyper clearing jungles in the meta lee sin and morgana not the fastest clears uh to date olympian though this is one of his champions that when he wants to 1v9 games, he picks up the Lee Sin. I'm excited to see where he goes. You might have a better idea about his pathing and where he's headed this game, but regardless of where he goes, I'm excited to see him really pull off some mechanics uh, in game one. I mean, there's gonna be mechanics everywhere here. A lot of scaling too. 
Um, as far as the transitions from lane to mid game to late game, I do tend to favor what I see here coming from side of redacted they have a massive tank up front and then Jin and victor just do so well in the late game i think that they have the insurance policy there on the other side it's more pokey right you have ziggs and ezreal coming out if they lock up anybody at all once anderson cooper gets a bind they should be blown up all of Ziggs's AOE, the Mega Infernal Bomb being thrown on top of one target, if it's not Jogat, they should be blown up. So Clockwork can easily turn a 5v5 fight, an objective, into a 5v4 extremely quickly. Um, that's going to be on Solar Biscuit to make sure that they get out of dodge quickly. In fact, I might even get a Mikhail's if I'm in this game after his uh, Shirelius. Yeah. We'll see what he decides to go because that is the only way Clockwork can find um, a, a, a standard advantage, a 5v4 advantage going into a team fight. He needs a Mikhail's to potentially negate that. Yeah, actually, I think even more so. Their composition relies on crowd control in order to land damage. You need to yeah. be standing still in order for Ezreal to land cues, or at least consistently. Same thing with Morgana binding, Ziggs damage as well. You need them to be pre-CC'd in order to follow up on it. And I think Mikhail's could be pretty high value here for Solar Biscuit. Get hit by a binding. Nope, that's one uh, skill shot negated, and then you're easily able to walk away as long as he's ready with that one. Outside of that, Booty Bang and Billy headed up top side into my Mind Blower. I imagine we get something like a Blade of the Ruin King first item, really start to beat up on this Cho'Gath. Do we get a Hull Breaker though? That is the question. <laughs> Are we ever getting the split push? Please don't come near me. I want to take your base before 25 minutes item, or maybe even an Anathemas onto something like the Victor, who's going to be doing a lot of the damage for this team. Possibly, uh, but Booty Bang and Billy, Transitioning up topside may not have uh, the itemization quite down yet. I'm excited though, because those two items could be pretty good this game. I think Dory K might pick up the chains actually. Uh, decent on hard CC supports like Leona, Nautilus, and like uh, Mind Blower also could potentially pick up those chains, get them really tanky, and provide some extra CC duration. It would only apply on the silence really. The the side of um, Redacted doesn't have a ton of hard CC. That was brought up briefly before, and that's going to be a problem for them. They're going to try to navigate team fights in and out, uh, really rely on Mind Blower creating space for the rest of the team. If Mind Blower can, no one can ignore Ziggs' spell, but if he can navigate through the minefields that running is going to be applying into the objective fights, um, and kind of stay healthy above 80% going into a fight breaking out and create the backline space that's necessary for Olympian to flank, for Dark Dragon to find some angles on his roots and on his curtains, uh, then Redacted can succeed. Otherwise, I really think that because Clockwork have drafted so much more CC, so much more pick and immediate burst damage, Ziggs Ezreal on top of a binding, like I said, just crazy amounts of damage coming out really, really quickly. Um, I, I, I tend to favor CB Clockwork's up here especially going into mid game because you know these late league teams they love to fight over drakes yeah highest priority objective in the game by far here in light mm -hmm. league dragons are the name of the game and this is why you see things like the karma in bot lane in order to get that priority on bot side with that being said we just have about 60 seconds left on our spectator delay the players are already on summoners rift duking it out to see who can grab themselves game one in the quarterfinals dunzi and i will be right back after a short intermission to bring you the action don't go anywhere Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for game one between CB Clockwork and Redacted. Man, these two teams have pushed so hard to make their way into playoffs and looking to push their way into semifinals. Now, obviously, my team sitting out on a bye along with Hawkthorn watching the action go down tonight. We might, have, might not have time for introductions here, Dunsies. We're getting a level one. In my mind blower should be able to watch this one happen go over the wall probably gonna have to flash here I would imagine instead he takes the hook now uses the flash but that's five minutes where Anderson Cooper has an angle on top side yeah already the set favored matchup going to be uh, given a, a window of opportunity for Anderson Cooper to make his way up there I imagine you would want to start bot if you're Anderson Cooper now um, but they have to be wary because you do see that redacted have 
retaliated by placing their own wards in the enemy jungle. They say, okay, we saw all five. We can safely get some vision down, try to figure out where Anderson Cooper is going to start. And in fact, it will be topside. So unless he gets a early level two gank or even level three, if he just clears his topside onto Booty Bang and Billy, it's going to be tough for him to take advantage of the flash. It's going to be up at five minutes, not five and a half minutes. So um, pretty quick. And we'll see. I really want to pay attention to the pathing of Cooper here. Yeah, he could actually head bot side. Zero wards now available for Dark Dragon and Solar Biscuit. They both place their wards down uh, in that counter invade. So definitely uh, could cause chaos down here. My mind blur, uh, though, having no flash. This is my so power. To be worried about the crowd control from CD Proper already one the landing threat forces a flash, and the fact they just don't have that kind of agency in their five-man squad. For now, though, Anderson Cooper will be headed bot side. Olympian headed top side. We're going to trade these crabs away. As Olympian, just a little bit quicker on the pace for now. Yeah, that 55% uh, or the 155% nerf. Oh, okay. Shouldn't be an issue here. So just walk away, Dory. Uh, just finding a hook, but doesn't really mean too much there. Solars just have to pop a pot. Yeah, they do find that level 2 advantage. I like this from Triple Cute and Dory K. The first time that they're laning together, at least in Light League, hopefully they've gotten some games on this combination. Dark Dragon and Solar Biscuit, they've had at least half a season here, so we'll see. They do have the double ranged lane, which means that they should be controlling the pace. Um, it's surprising that they didn't reach level 2 first, but they did have to uh, provide a leash for Olympian while Anderson could start topside. Which does make sense. Um, I do think that Solar Biscuit and Dra Dark Dragon oh, should take control of this lane, however. Um, just the nature of that double range support combo is is makes it life so much easier playing this Karma poke lane. But Triple Q, man, landing these Qs over and over again. Mystic Shot starting to hurt, and here comes a gank. Olympian setting it up, but he is on vision. Yeah. Olympian looking for it with the all pro top lane, but a flash haymaker will send my mind blower straight back to the fountain. Has no That's way away though. Olympian, one more auto will finish it off, but a 1v2 outplay for the new top side at CB Clockwork. Man, booty banging Billy. I knew he had the moves in the mid lane. He says, don't worry about it, guys. I'm also a beast in the top lane. Amazing flash haymaker. Anderson Cooper, though, first gank. Wants it, flash in for Dory. Doesn't land the hook, which means the CC follow-up is pretty shallow. Binding connects, but Dark Dragon has no problem walking away. Dark Harvest collected, but that's all they're going to get from bot side. Redacted trading that top lane kill one for one means we're just still about even, but the first blood gold will give the advantage, at least early on, to CBC. Yeah, just a couple of hundred gold here. Nothing big, but Mind Blower still flashless. If Anderson Cooper can get a reset here and make his way top lane, you can see that wait, but here comes a 2v2. Olympian straight from top now to mid, but Cooper is responding and kind, finding land. There's a bomb. Olympian goes straight back in with the resonating strike. Flash away from AC. Means he will not have that cooldown for any other skirmishes that do manifest. But Olympian, the confidence on the Lee Sin and the comfort pick allows him to earn that summoner spell. Yeah, well played. They, I mean, they didn't really bait that binding now. Goldfan did get hit by a nice knife from Cooper. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Olympian, he is 1 0. He hasn't had his base yet. Goldfan trying to make something happen. Straight back. Olympian wants the action in mid ward. Hot, but meanwhile, bot side 2v2 popping off. Doesn't find very much. Triple Q going relatively low on the Ezreal. Has no more pots to work with, but does have heal. Solar maybe thinking about making this 2v2 a little bit worse. But for now, it's just Triple taking the worst end of these trades. Dark Dragon has the Dark Harvest as well on this Jin. So those four shots really begin to stack up the damages straight back to clearing for now. Yeah, they have found themselves. Oh, man, Dory K. You find it. Um, this doesn't mean all too much, but the root actually connects for both Solar and Dark Dragon. Dory now has to get the heal from Triple, but the Ignite is down. Dark has Flash if he needs it, but he doesn't. He just executes the support. Now it's a nice play from Triple. Arcane shifting in to make sure Dark cannot get away. Now flashing from the chains away from Solar Biscuit, who has Flash of his own, maybe looking for a Mantra Q, but mana is low, which means he has no angle to return the damage, but 1v1 on bot side means CB Clockwork pick one back up. 
I was so hoping Solar Biscuit would flash forward and, and make sure that the tether does not break. So many times when you're playing this Karma support, AD carries will just instinctively flash away when you're flashing at them with the tether, not really realizing that, hey, I'm even if I flash here, I can't break the chain. And so, I mean, Solar Biscuit was guaranteed a kill if he had maintained that range and possibly still would have burned Triple Q's flash. Instead, they go one for one. Um, you see Noon Quiver picked up here for Dark Dragon. It's going to be just the Sheen plus a Dark Sword here for Triple Q on his way to the Divine Sunderer, which, I mean, we talked about Mind Blower as a massive tank, but he's already starting off a little bit weak. Sunderer plus Ziggs poke going into the only front line of redacted that's something i'm going to be looking for when we get to the uh 5v5s but here comes a gank again bottom bot side they didn't respect the play dark dragon burned his flash which means the binding is basically point and click burning down to the ignite but olympian is now arriving and here comes the teleport it's five man bot from redacted they want to protect their ad carry and support olympian going forward my mind blower very fast the hook doesn't find the mark a huge bomb across the back line but dory's the first one to fall there's no other way in for cb redacted to get out for a 1-0. Yeah, and Dark Dragon got dangerously low there from the Megal Inferno bomb. I thought maybe running could squeeze one of those bombs nearby. Just throw it past. Oh my goodness, one another chance there on Dark Dragon. I think he's too healthy now at this point, but they are getting so close. The Zig poke is crazy. There's no smite. It's a 50-50. Olympian gets it at the end. He secures. And Redacted will walk away. Close call there on the Drake, but Redacted taking the victories. Booty Bang and Billy never interested in the play on the bot side. Here comes Triple. Please do not Arcane shift over that wall, my friend. It is not worth your life. And you will just walk away. But Booty, whack it on this shirt all along. Yeah, and it's certainly worth stalling the recall timers because Booty Bang and Billy has so much tempo on the top lane and your bot lane's gonna get the shove in in the bot lane as well. Both side lanes completely have control of their wave states. They're gonna be able to move possibly over to the Herald next because the dragon obviously was just taken by Redacted. They have the stacking potential, but with Herald on the board and tempo available to um, the side of Clockwork. I'm looking for them to make a move. This is for them to decide where do they want to go. They have the tempo. They need to do something with it other than just recall here. Yeah, they need to do something with this advantage, but you can see the truest advantage in the game is going to be top side for Booty Bang and Billy using his TP to get back in the lane early on. Means he could not react to the play, but ends up being mathematically worth for him. He gets so much gold there on the top side. And with 37 CS on my Mind Blower, he now has accelerated the pace of this 1v1 to an unplayable point for the Cho'Gath is working his way towards what I would imagine uh, is that Gore Drinker. Stripe Baker, not uh, one of the best items anymore, but Gold Fan just working his way in mid lane as well. He's down CS, spot lane's down CS, top lane as well. Uh, that Drake comes at a cost, my friend, and that is Wave State's Olympian. Thinking about doing something, doesn't even need the ward hop. He's assisted, flash kick with the Dragon's Rage, but Goldfin doesn't have all too much damage. Beautiful stun, Olympian's gonna fall, but they need to trade it back. Well done by Goldfin to flash away, but it's not enough. AC picks it up, and a two for one means it's not worth CD Clockwork fight back. Yeah, and Dory K has the roam on Solar Biscuit. Level advantage, tempo advantage, made his way to the mid lane first. Maybe thought something might be up, and it exactly was. They blow so many summoners here. Both Olympian and Goldfan had to flash there, and they still pay for their lives. Trying to pick up a plate here in the mid lane. They're not going to greed for it. They don't have a wave right now. But, I mean, CB Clockwork, they are retaliating at every step that Redacted is making. Even in the 5v4 bottom, they all teleported down there. You saw running throw his teleport onto the tower, try to support his team from a distance, and they only lost the life of Dory K on the Nautilus. A couple of fights, uh, just you know, some bruisers tackling away at each other, but man, CD Clock were just stepping up with their overall macro game. Yeah, Dark Dragon too far stepped up as well. I mean, his life is just an afterthought. Pass on over to the Ezreal. And Dark Dragon caught out on bot side. Three 300 gold paycheck to Triple Cute. Now 200 on the Ezreal with 150 gold on his head as well. Already has the Sheen. Stacking up that tier sender or maybe nerfed. But when you're this strong in the early game, Ezreal man, that champion just is impossible to deal with. Olympian hanging around over this wall, but... 
does not have the kick, does not have the flash. So just making sure Solar Biscuit of all members can clean up this wave. Yeah, and Dark Dragon, he's obviously greedy, a little bit overextended there, but it's also because of the tempo that CB Clockwork have maintained, right? You saw Dory K make his way to the mid lane first. Well, Solar Biscuit was soaking the wave because their mid laner, their jungler was dead. Someone had to collect that experience and that gold. And so while Solar Biscuit was waiting around, just soaking the wave in the mid lane, Dory K made his way back to the bot lane and ganked his own lane. Dark Dragon completely just caught out by himself. He should be respecting that, knowing that Solar Biscuit is mid. Instead, the depth charge goes on to his head. They get another kill in Necrox. We're looking at a 2.5k gold lead right now at 11 minutes. Yeah, this is rough stuff for Redacted. They need Olympian, honestly, in these front lines, making plays. And he's looking for a top side with My Mind Blower once again. These duo make things look really rough for Booty Bang and Billy. Has to burn his flash to get away from the Sonic Wave. They are sent out by Olympian, but will be recalled in time. So not able to get much for Redacted, but that's a summoner at least for this squad. Drake up in 20 seconds, but Olympian not interested in that win condition. Instead, he's going for the Rift Herald. Yeah, and I mean, every single lane. Uh, here's some more action here. Oh my gosh, the flash binding is so beautiful. Anderson Cooper throw it out and he picks it up. Dark Dragon, one, three, and one. This Jin does not get a break. I know, I mean, it's crazy here. Dark Dragon just on repeat in the gray screen. Not sure what's going on with him. The depth charge is still available, which means Dory K could be making a position here in the mid lane. Goldfan on the run. Could he be caught? She's dead. I think he's just gone. The hook is way too long range. Damage though isn't enough. The satchel is not what you would want though. Running may have just given Goldfan a free exit. May have just killed a support instead. Dory going low. Olympian here. One more Q would do it. Instead he just ward hops for the auto attacks. Does he have enough damage? Indeed he does. Olympian picks up kill number one. Immediately traded the one to Goldfan. Somehow he died in the back end of the fight. Running does not have his ulti to finish off any other target. Satchel charge may be in time. Olympian beautiful shield. Not able to follow it over the wall. And Lee Syndra, man, it's a deadly disease, and he pays for it with his life. My goodness, and even Goldfan dropped to the last tick of Ignite there. Just horrible circumstances here for Redacted. Everything going the way of CB Clockwork right now. And I'm telling you, Dory K is all over the map, man. Dory K, honestly. May have been snubbed for first spot. Fire streaks eat your heart out. I don't know. He's he's uh, he's thinking about it tonight because Dory thought the Morgana was gonna go to him. Honestly, don't love his Morgana play. Think it's a little too passive, a little too just waiting on the black shield. Honestly, but this Nautilus is anything but. He is everywhere making moves for CB Clockwork, and they have gotten paid for it. Speaking of getting paid, Dropping that first turn on top side. Yeah, right now, Dory K is in C champ mode, hook champ mode. Uh, anyone that he can spot, including my lure right now, if they're not under a turret, he wants them. He is making sure that he has the support of Anderson Cooper ganking lanes together. He's ganking his own lane, even with Mr. Cooper over there. Um, I mean, they had the flash tether on that uh, amazing ultimate coming out from Anderson Cooper to blow Dark Dragon's flash earlier in the bot lane and still kill him. And meanwhile, Triple Cute, who's been by himself, hey, he's on Ezreal. He's farming away. He's got a 10 CS lead despite playing a lot of 2v1 lanes. Yeah, Stolar Biscuit just can't put on the pressure the same way a Nautilus can. So we'll just have to let the Ezreal farm with the Mystic Shots. The best way to do it would be freeze the wave, but Jin isn't the best at doing that, and Ezreal doesn't really care regardless. Maybe looking for four-man bot side. TP available as well. Dive could be an option. Now my mind blower does have TP available. Crimson as well. Cobalt. I think it's just time to siege. Two shot barrage tags up both members, Sorry, which means their health bars aren't yeah. too large to step back up to this one. Should just have to watch the turret. Oh. Yeah, the satchel, my goodness. Takes it down. What are you doing? That's not your spot. You can't be there anymore. And now the depth charge is going to land. Binding as well. You watched your turret fall, and then you watched yourselves die. Redacted critical mistake, and they're going to lose everything for it. You know what? I get it. It's, it's a new patch. You know, 
Ziggs can take turrets now with his W. Did you know that? Oh, wait. It's been a year since that's been implemented. My goodness. I mean, it seems like Dark Dragon and Solar Biscuit were very surprised by that turret just obliterating. Didn't know Mr. Running could do that. And they actually are able to pick up two turrets there in the bot lane. Goldfang going to trade it away. Gets his first mid turret. They do get to break open that area. It's the most important outer turret. You get to navigate between the buffs on not, each side not, no. but at this point you're five almost 5k gold behind it's 60 minutes in you have one drake to your name and that is it that's the only thing that you have going for you take a look at the gold across the board the only person with a lead right now is olympian and it's barely at that anderson cooper only a few hundred gold behind and he's playing a more supportive jungler to boot it does not matter this is firmly in the grips of cb clockwork they are in the driver's seat they have the cc to back it up they have one drake stack so far and they're looking to take more. They want to be the last outer as well. Booty basically dropping that one by himself. Four man makes the play happen bot side, and now it's a four man effort once again in mid lane. Pretty hard to tease into a victory though. Olympian looking for it. It's a flash away, but now he's one caught out. Olympian taking himself burned out. Very low. True shot for Raj finds gold man. He's taken down before he can blink. Dory K now traded back. One for one. Here comes the curtains for the first time this game. Third shot, Ford will find AC, but he was healthy enough. The execute damage isn't there. So redacted one for one. Mid laner for support is not a trade you want to take. With the siege still coming through, CB Clockwork still own this push. Yeah, this turret is surely dead. The satchel will come out here very soon. Uh, there it is, and it's gone. I mean, just completely dissipated. And man, they just stand too far. Dark Dragon, you're a quarter health. You cannot be hovering when these objectives go down. You need to reset. Drake is going to be CB Clockworks. Don't even check it. Right now, you guys are down. And oh my goodness, this is such a nice little play but they're going to be spotted on the pink war thank you observers for that vision toggle <laughs> yeah, you're not going to catch out uh redacted this time they are the number three seed for a reason but right now they are not playing like it two CBC standards cb clockwork man coming out strong and this team may have started off the split rough they may have been a little behind of the curve for their own expectations, but taking game one off redacted would spell the exact opposite here for their playoff run. And it's not like they're doing it in silly form. They are actively going across the map and trading objectives wisely. Yes, you lose first dragon, but Booty got paid on topside, plus they kept the tempo up. This team honestly has navigated this game so well, they're gonna get the Rift Herald for it as well. So another objective in the hands of CV Clockwork and Anderson Cooper. This team really Mystic. now owns Summoner's Rift. They own game one. If you're looking for a hero on Redacted, yeah. there's not too many faces to look at outside of Olympian. You could see the aggression. You could see the willingness to fight. And it's on his Lee Sin to really make things happen here come this late game. He almost picked up Triple Cute in that previous fight, um, but he was just bounced around like a pinball. You saw the satchel into the hook, and then he's dashing out, and he just doesn't have um, the black shield or enough of enough space to work with in order to get to Triple Cute, even if he finds a Sonic Wave so or a Resonating Strike. And so it's 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 tough for Olympian to uh, even make his flank onto like a particular carry instead he's gonna need to find some sort of insect maybe he can even cook bo kick booty banging billy through the team and kind of play front to back that way i don't think he's gonna be able to get to anyone in the back line if running or cute get hit by the cues of Olympian here black shoots immediately going on him the satchel is gonna be dropped the cc will be saved from dory k to keep his carry safe and then they'll re-engage and dory k is feeling it right now man just spamming the laugh got the anchor throwing it down i'm gonna float around like a little spaceman i'm feeling it i love it man dory k is feeling himself and he's feeling a win here in game one one three one is the name of the game here for cb clockwork because they put running in box side the siege is just too good booty bang and billy but the lead he has should never lose on the 1v1 top side so yeah they just want everything and they're not willing to sacrifice anything as they 
siege all three lanes at once mid tier two under fire this one's gonna be cleared away though by solar and dark dragon dory lurking in the wings has the flash running as well thinking about making something happen but shouldn't be able to find too much but with booty coming down as well a five-man dive does not look good 5v2 those numbers do not add up for redacted yeah, gotta be careful. The satchel can be around to so just completely take it away. And Harold is gonna get it low, but we're gonna have a fight breaking out. Here we go. There's the resonating strike. Can Olympian find anything? Kick is there, but it doesn't get a lot of distance. Triple is gonna find the kill onto Olympian. They turn it right back around. My mind blower now in a lot of trouble. He's gonna be taken down as well. Two for nothing fight. Flashing away is everyone on Redacted. An attempted effort turns south and CB Clockwork make up with a two nothing. Oh man, and Dark Dragon almost gets picked up on the back end of that. The amazing Mega Inferno Bomb was instant onto Dark Dragon's head, the, the instant that he opened up the curtains there. So Dark Dragon had to cancel his own ultimate in order to make space. He healed away from uh, running bombs there, just bouncing away towards his head in order just to stay alive. And so it was a, effectively a 4v5 to start that team fight because of the play of running. Doing really, really well in his debut in the playoffs no less and triple Q also with the fancy feet flashing away from the Cho'Gath knockup not going to be hit by that rupture making sure that his team still has their carries available and they want more man oh there's maybe something here though they get the shutdown on to Anderson Cooper 50 seconds until Drake spawns 35 second timer on the jungler so it will be around but it should be priority to the likes of redacted if they can push their way into this river but i'm not sure that cb clockwork even care about a base at this point running will channel his along with dory so if they want it it will be able to get some priority my mind blower interrupting dory's recall maybe there's a route here just barely misses the deadly flourish goldfen flashing forward by the way just to tack on a little bit extra my mind blower now tracing down triple but you cannot kill an ezreal my friend he is too evasive the arcane shift out to see safety running does not get a recall if they have not spent their gold dunzi yeah and so this is the first time that you see redacted finally get some space for themselves oh no triple q triple what a play by olympian kicked over the wall they get the ezreal now they're running after running and there's no running away from this one my friend two for nothing for redacted and they find the play around vision and who else but olympian to kick things off in a comeback it is a story as old as time. You start feeling like you are in firm control, like you're invincible. You cannot lose. All of a sudden, there's a small pick in the jungle. Anderson Cooper goes down. That's a little bit of a shutdown. Redacted take the space. They even want some more poke onto Dory K. Eventually, they get the two carries and a massive shutdown off of Triple Q, who was 5-0, and oh, by the way. Before that, goes over to none other than your carry, Olympian, on the Lee Sin. Really, really nice micro play there. He was hiding in the vision. They didn't see him sneak into that top red bush, and so Triple Q just overstepped a little bit. I was just about to give him some praise for his play he's playing so aggressive with his arcane shifts because he knows the cc from redacted is lacking he can play aggressive he can e forward and still feel mm -hmm. safe with black shield but anderson cooper was dead he was 4v5 they still felt like they wanted to take the fight and like you said they didn't even spend their gold that is just flying too close to the sun but they're gonna get something back here dark dragon that is not your way to walk my friend true shot barrage and booty bang and billy drops the 80 carry one more time for two and five the biggest problem for redacted is just what clockwork ran into and it is darkness on this side of the map they get their AD carry picked out, which means CB Clockwork now own this Baron pit. Goldfan on bot side does have teleport. Tell me, Dunzi, I've seen Olympian steal these before. I swear mm. he's in this pit. It is not CB Clockwork. It is not a 75-25. This is straight up 50-50. Watch the showstopper. He's going to keep Olympian out. They want it. Knock up there with a Satchel 3K. And with that, CB Clockwork do not continue the Baron. It's now reset. Booty flashing forward. Doesn't find very much. Showstopper. Here we go to the back line. Health Popper does not do enough, though. Hook goes wide from Dory. Olympian on the run. My Mind Blower is going to be taken down first with a Haymaker. Triple Q picking up a kill on that. Gold Fan TP might not be in a great spot, but he is still 1v4. He finds a kill into Dory. Now he's running away, trying to kite himself back to his team, but it's just not in time. The Curtains may find Triple. The heal 
goes in time. Booty gets in front of the shots. And Dark Dragon cannot finish the kill. Two to one, but Redacted stopped the Baron. Yeah, and I think they're going to be able to stall it long enough. They still have a pink there. Anderson Cooper is going to clear that for now. Olympian half health. They've started it even with vision still available. So they're not going to back off. Olympian has to stay looking for a steal here. No vision. There goes a pink from Solar Biscuits. It's going to be on the hero. Smites don't matter about the level. They both have it up, Necrox, and they're going to back off. Okay, TP in for my mind. Blower means they cannot finish. Anderson Cooper here on front line. My mind still here making sure they do not pursue any further kills close stuff there at the baron what two to three attempts to start that one up from cb clockwork but redacted throwing everything throwing their bodies at this pit means that cb clockwork have to respect the potential for a lee sin steal olympian constantly telling me he loves to play this Lee Sin getting over walls, getting into pits, making people nervous about this spite. And he trusts himself to seal that one away. So CB Clockwork cannot pick up the Baron. Minute 40. Now Dunsey on this next dragon. It's not soul for anyone just quite yet, but it is soul point for whoever can pick this one up. Yeah, it's it's a long ways away. Neither team has that win con in their sights right now. And just based off that last team fight, Goldfan is starting to come online. He was 1v4ing and kind of holding it off and even got a solo kill onto Dory K as well. But now he's caught overextended. A TP's coming in. TP on the bot side. Olympian is here, though. I'm not sure they want this 2v1. Booty Bang and Billy has a lot of damage. Showstopper's going to take Goldfan away from his... Oh. oh, my God! What is that haymaker? Olympian is now caught out. The rest of the team has come out. And what was that from Booty Bang and Billy other than a punch to the throat and to the hearts of redacted fans listening? Yeah. Uh, disgusting. Just... He's not even building mathematically correct, and Goldfan did not exist. I was just about to mention that I'm hoping he's building Azania's next so he can stall a little bit longer. I think he is because of the cloth armor, but it might not matter. Booty Bang and Billy, my clear favorite for an MVP so far this game, took it to the number one light league all pro top laner. And I mean, Triple Q's not far behind with his really nice Ezreal play in a new role right now. But both of these guys, on top of Dory K's roaming in that early to mid game, are absolutely showing up. Redacted aren't dead in the water yet, though. Still 5k down, but they've managed to maintain that gold lead to 4 or 5k, almost picking up triple Q here. They want something to happen, Necrox. Yeah, but instead it's just Drake started up. Here we go. The fight's going to break out on the other side, though, and running falls down to Dark Dragon. Drake's gone, though. That does not matter at this point. Anderson Cooper has plenty enough damage to finish this one out, but Redacted are sprinting to this pit. They cannot find the Deadly Flourish under Booty Bang and Billy, but they tag him with a slow from Goldfan's Death Ray. Does he flash over the wall? Gravity well placed down, but does not find any stuns. Redacted were trying. They were looking for their next win condition, but instead it's CB Clockwork. Now one dragon away from Mountain Soul. They lose their mid laner, but Redacted cannot take advantage of the tempo we'll have to recall yeah i mean just barely missing out there i really thought gold fan was gonna find that flash you can see that he's even up his gold uh the top lane is still a massive deficit towards uh the side of booty bang and billy he's just so large right now and the other gold difference right now is in the bot lane both triple cute and dory k just so far ahead of their laners it's olympian and gold fan that is who redacted are leaning on dark dragon has kind of shifted into the supportive root and curtain role for redacted he just needs to apply some cc apply some slows open up that ultimate safely because sometimes he's a detriment towards his team running is just targeting him so hard that's uh, Dark Dragon is exited out of the fight before it even breaks out. It's tough for him to find angles and to find space in order to navigate where he wants to throw his fourth shot even. He can't find that onto anybody because the, the, the side of CB Clockwork are playing so tight-knit. They see a target. They want to find him. And here's Mind Blower. Here's the target. Dory K wants him. It's going to get slowed down, binded, knocked up, slapped around, and taken out. Triple cute is on a killing spree on this Ezreal. And the one man that could stand in the front and absorb the abuse 
from the CB Clockwork squad has now been killed. There's no way for Redacted to step forward, but there's a way for CB Clockwork to take the fight. And it's with a binding and Dory K finding an angle under the mid lane and Gold Fan will fall. Curtains have opened, Dory going low, four shot, not able to find him. Dark Dragon misses out on that. Now Showstopper coming in, flash over the wall. Olympian found his way into the backside, only able to kill off Dory K. Now he's flashing away. Anderson Cooper not able to make the chain connect, but Olympian goes back in and he goes back down. Double kill to triple Q and redacted four members wiped away off the board and Baron's on the table. Yeah, I mean, that is so unfortunate for Redacted. Mind blower, we just talked about it. The unit of CB Clockwork moving together, using their CC to pick off ex overextension after overextension. You've seen Goldfan do it. You saw Dark Dragon do it in the laning phase. Now Mind Blower is the next victim. And what happens? The rest of Redacted, they're like, oh shoot, we need to help and we need to try to make something of this. Oh my god, Triple Q, what are you doing, my man? You're insane, forcing the heal out of Dark Dragon. But Mind Blower, he's looking for the feast. Next Please box. tell me he does not get this. Please tell me he does not seal this with a feast. The chomp is available. Oh, no, my Mind Blower has just taken the Baron straight from the claws of Anderson Cooper and CB Clockwork. You cannot let that happen. Redacted still in this game. I can't believe that. That was the one thing. And I think if Triple Q, instead of focused onto Dark Dragon, if he had applied his damage onto Mind Blower instead, he could have pushed him out before because he was so low when that feast finally went down. They needed to make sure that he could not utilize that ultimate. Anderson Cooper, it's a 900 smite. It does not outsmite feast at this point. It's so tough. You need to make sure he is out. He cannot participate in a coin flip because Mind Blower will win every time picking up redacted it is a 4k gold lead almost minimal at this point in the game 33 minutes in cb clockwork have mountain soul available to them on soul point in just one minute but with baron on the board and redacted getting a little bit of momentum back i don't know necrox we're gonna see a 5v5 breakout i think for this next drake Honestly, if I were CB Clockwork after this, I'm taking a five minute breather. I want this dragon to go over. I do not care if Redacted are on Soul Point. They can take it. Everyone will be tied up in terms of dragons, but instead, Dory uh -oh. K wants in. There's a vision placed down, but Olympian's looking to make the effort. Gravity Well finds a mark. Dory K going golden with a stopwatch of his own. Gonna keep himself alive for a little bit longer. Knock comes there, but in the backside of the fight, it's Booty Bang and Billy bringing Solar Biscuit into the middle of the team. Haymaker doesn't find enough damage, but my mind blower has been taken down first. Olympian now the next target. Target. Guardian Angel procced. Can they survive? Can they protect this jungler? Away he goes. Shielding is massive from Solar at this time. Oh. Guild Force beautifully executed from Dark Dragon. Deadly Flourish not able to finish off Dory K. The Collector does not proc just quite yet. The poke is still in and with my Mind Blower out, it's a 5v4 but health bars are low for Clockwork. Yeah, I think Oh my goodness, Mind Blower has TP in 20 seconds. If they can stall long enough, it's gonna be there quicker than Booty Bang and Billy can reset. He's still at half health, just pushing in the bot lane. Both teams so tense right now, so much on the line. Taking game one, it is up for grabs for both sides. Redacted still hovering around, and Mind Blower has TP. Oh, oh my god, Dark Dragon Falls! Oh man, it's disaster when Triple Q's on the front end. He's going forward. Olympia to the back end, looking to 1v1 Dory K, but it does not matter. The rest of your team's being wiped out. Olympian cannot escape. The shielding is there, but he will fall. Not even sure why you need the dragon and stolen again. Come on, man. My mind blower cannot keep doing it, but I'm not sure that it matters, Dunsey. With one last fight, with one last ace, CB Clockwork, take it down mid lane. Yeah, the death timers are very high right now. Dark Dragon and Solar Biscuit will be up to defend the doubles, but I don't know if they can hold it. It's for sure going to be an inhibitor down, but they're taking it so fast. Ziggs with his bombs and Ezreal with so much DPS right now. They want to push for the win. For CB Clockwork, they want to go for it. Necrox game one is up for grabs. They're going for it. Nexus Troy number one under fire. Already taken down. The Binding's going to connect. Flashing forward is Ori K, and they've got Dark Dragon once again. Nexus Troy already up. Under God and Nexus is the next thing to fall. Yeah. Doesn't matter about the kills. It does not matter about the remaining members. They take Redacted down in the first game. 
Yeah, and CB Clockwork. There were some bumps on the road, but from start to finish, they were able to navigate through all phases, leaning mid and late game. They got their soul. Oh no, actually, they didn't even get their soul, but they did stack their drakes. They didn't even get their barren objectives, but Dory K through the early game was able to navigate into top lane, into mid lane, find a lot of ganks with Anderson Cooper on the Morgana, utilize that CC, and they just transitioned as a unit so well. CB Clockwork, they're not going anywhere. They're the sixth seed, but they want to be a force to be reckoned with here. And look how little they died. Five, one, and six on Booty Bang and Billy. Triple Q, one death as well. Anderson Cooper, one death. I'm surprised that Redacted were even in that game. But regardless, we're getting ourselves into a game two here in just a couple minutes. I'm sure these players need a little bit of time to breathe. So after a short intermission, Dunsey and I will be back with the draft and a little bit more analysis before we get into game two here at the quarterfinals. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back.